Usually Iridian's equipment scans real eyes with infrared light, but photographs are different and accuracy okay. will depend on the quality of the images. This looks actually quite nice. Nice texture here. The system pays no attention to color. It only deals with iris tissue structure. So Images of Alan Beebe's eyes are loaded into the computer. A 17-year-old mystery has come down to this moment. Uh, this is uh, the iris that we expected, and the iris code, you see it has large gaps here. Uh, compared to the left eye of the original woman, the mismatch is 45%. So only 55% of the bits matched, and um, again, it's a clear mismatch. That's the same degree of mismatch which we would normally expect to see between my eyes and yours. So Alan Beebe is not the Afghan girl. Disappointed, Steve revisits the elders at Nasir Ba to see if they have any new leads. Haji Farouk has been showing the picture around the camp, and two men have come forward to say they know the girl. Their tents were next to her family's in an orphan camp at Nasir Ba. They say she's living in Afghanistan, near Tora Bora, and they offer to go in to try to find her. They set off towards Tora Bora. The mission is not without risk. War still rages in the area. This region was recently one of Osama bin Laden's strongholds. It could take weeks for them to return. Nothing is certain. Steve's time is running out. We have a lot of leads still coming in, but I'm going to have to leave today. I've been through the camp exhaustively, looking and talking to as many people as possible. We've given it uh, our, really our best shot. Rahim Mullah, who's been working with me, a highly respected journalist here, is going to be continuing to follow up on these leads. On Steve's final day, he visits the Nasir Ba Cemetery. He remembers a rumor that the Afghan girl died in childbirth at the age of 13. It is a sea of unmarked graves, a testament to the millions of displaced lives that never made it home. Fifty miles inside of Afghanistan, Safiullah one of the men who went searching for the Afghan girl reaches a remote village near Tora Bora. He finds his friend working in a field. When the man sees the photograph, he recognizes the girl in the picture. He says, it's his sister. Rahi Mullah receives a phone call from the men. They say they found the Afghan girl and they're bringing her to Peshawar. National Geographic arranges for correspondent Boyd Matson to race to Peshawar and follow up on what might be a promising lead. Boyd arrives at the elder's house. The two men have returned. In this culture, Boyd must first meet with the men. The woman they say is the Afghan girl is resting inside the house. So you're the brother of the girl? Zeruri. Yes. And you have very similar eyes to your sister? <laughs> Same color. Yes. Yes, I agree. Her name is Sharbat Gula. <laughs> and Sharbat means uh, a sweet drink. So it would be good if we could see his sister or at least uh, have someone go and take a look, perhaps someone get a, a picture that we could look at. She, he says the women can go and have a look and then uh, we will see. And is it okay if she takes uh, just a picture with their... It is agreed that Carrie Regan, the associate producer on the team, can go in and photograph the woman. She is allowed to enter a world where few men can follow. Suddenly, the weight of the search is on her shoulders. Does the Afghan girl lie behind this door? He is the husband. 
Yes, and his uh, name is? Rehmat Gul. And how many children do you have? I had four children. One has died, and I have three daughters. Ten minutes have passed. For everyone, it feels like an hour. Well, Carrie? It's interesting. What is I it? have some photos to show you. Uh, the eyes are this brilliant color green. There's a little bit of blue, but it's somewhat faded. Uh, the traces on the iris, these marks. She has marks that are quite similar. <laughs> and moles as well. Now, when you look at the eyes, if you just looked at that and not the rest, you'd think those were the same eyes a few years later. All right, we've been given permission by the men in the family for me to go in and take a few pictures. She's quite reluctant to let any man see her face, in particular a foreigner. It's quite a privilege we've been granted. Thank you for letting us come and meet you and for coming all the way from Afghanistan. You were very young when this was taken. Do you have any remembrance of this picture that day, what happened? I remember that day. I was wearing the shawl which was burned over here at home while cooking. I still recall this dress and that day. And where was this picture taken? This picture was taken in the school and there was a tent in the background and there was a lot of sunlight that day. This is the only picture ever taken of you? Yes. Uh, he said I was never photographed before this and never after this. We got to ask her just a few questions, but as you can see, she's so shy, she would hardly talk. The amazing thing is she gave me a couple of details that Steve had told me earlier and that matched up with her story. She even pointed out these holes in her shawl and mentioned that she remembered this because it had been burned in a fire. She said she was the last one he took pictures of that day, which is what Steve told me. She remembered that it was right inside the tent in the edge. Steve said that's what happened. He used the light just by opening the flap. Uh, those details match up. The search has taken a surprising turn. The case is not yet solved, but it's much closer than a few moments ago. Sharbat and her brother, Kashar Khan, recall their final days in Afghanistan in the early 80s. What happened to your parents? Our parents were both killed by the bombing of the Soviet jet fighters. At that time, a number of people were killed and injured. There was no proper medical treatment. I don't really recall our parents. I was very small at the time. Their lives were under such random, violent assaults. Their mother and father had to be buried under the cover of darkness. We left for the refugee camp with our grandmother. It was very difficult. A difficult journey. We had to walk through the mountains. The Russian planes, helicopters, were flying overhead. They were looking for targets. We had to hide in the caves, and it was cold. And I remember one night which we spent on the way. There was snowfall on the one side, very cold. But then we were trying to light a fire to remain warm, so it was a very difficult night. So when we came to live in the refugee camp in Pakistan, I continued to be scared of planes because I thought they could bomb us again and kill us. By the time she was 13, Sharbat's marriage was arranged. I was happy, I can say, for the first year of marriage. But then there was so much suffering. Our daughter was a beautiful child, but she died at about eight months. 
She fell ill while I was at work. She was taken to the city hospital, but still, she died. Ramat Ghul is Sharbat's husband. He was not able to be with her when their daughter died. He works in Peshawar because there's little work for a baker in the remote mountains of Afghanistan. Since their marriage, he spent most of his time away from home and sends money back to his family. In a setting that's more comfortable for Shabbat, Rahi Mullah arranges to have a respected ophthalmologist, Dr. Mustafa Iqbal, examine her eyes. I gotta tell you, I'm feeling a little bit of an adrenaline rush because we're very close. The story matches up, and this is a, this is a real acid test to have the eye doctor examine and see if he can find those same freckles in the iris. Dr. Iqbal is from Pakistan. He studied at one of the most prestigious eye surgery institutions in the world, Moorfields Eye Hospital in London, England. The most striking thing about this, the original picture, was this deep blue collar around the iris. And we still got that. And she looks at the sky. You can still see that blue iris. Yes, it's still there. The, the other thing to look for is the mark over here which corresponds very well to the original picture. What we are also interested in is the shape of the upper lip. If you look at it, that has more or less remained the same. Not about it, this is the same lady. We have found, have found the Afghan girl. The Holy Grail. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have found the Holy Grail, that's <laughs> right. Back in Washington, the FBI has offered to lend their expertise. Forensic examiner Tom Mushino usually spends his days identifying criminals from security cameras. Today, he's helping solve a 17-year-old mystery. In this case, I look at things like shape of the eyes um, and any specific identifying characteristics like uh, mole patterns or scars, uh, chip teeth, ear patterns. It doesn't take long for Mushino to find a problem. Well, one of the first things I noticed was indeed the mole on the upper, uh, just above the, uh, the right side of the, the upper lip, um, what appears to be a mole. Um, and it's not consistent with uh, the woman, uh, the, the older woman, the image taken just recently. Moles actually, a uh, very small percentage, less than 1% of the moles uh, will disappear. Um, normally, they just stay in the same place, possibly get larger. Back at Iridian Technologies, they are also working with photographs of Charbot. Yeah, I'd be skeptical. If this is the same eye, mm -hmm. then clearly some things that were not in here have appeared mm -hmm. in here. Full of doubt, it all comes down to the eyes. Let's make a new image. Will they be able to identify one woman among millions? Some of the matches are as good as we see in daily operation with our imagers. What the computer those. reveals is astonishing. We can say that we're confident that it's the same person with a probability on the order of one in a hundred million or so that we're wrong. So we feel pretty confident. And the FBI has new evidence, a never before published photograph of the original Afghan girl and if you look very closely, there is no mole to be found above her lip. And being a person in a refugee camp, um, it's quite possible it's dirt. Well, the conclusion, just considering all of the consistencies, and there are so many of them, um, and considering that the inconsistencies are explainable, is that it's the same woman, it's the same person. When Steve hears the results, he rushes back to Pakistan 